welcome to another Cloud and Art Plus video. My name is Michael and today I will present you uh, a feature of Code Build and the feature is called Report Groups. So you get an introduction to that. Um, so why is it important? How does it work and how does it actually look like? So before we start, um, I will um, give you a short introduction into why it is actually important to have uh, or to use Report Groups. So Code build um, runs um, your unit tests, for example. The problem is that uh, it is very hard to get insights into that. So with report groups, you can actually get insights into your unit test um, uh, coverage, for example, also how many tests are working at the moment and how long they run. Um, you can also get um, insights into the coverage of your code. So you have to generate this data and the report group actually captures it and displays it for you and it looks like um, or, um, like this what you see on the screen at the moment. So you get very nice graphs and we go into details here. So it's it's the best way to visualize what's actually actually going on. You can see trends and this makes sure that your developers get a better understanding of how the unit tests are doing and how code coverage um, is evolving over time. So that's why it's important to use something like report groups. And I like them because they are so nicely integrated with code build. And um, so let's check out uh, how they work. So what is actually code build? So I think uh, it is best described as a fully managed build environment and it's based on Docker images. So when you define a Docker um, a code build, you basically specify the image that is used uh, as the build environment. And within that you can run and uh, whatever you like, for example, you can execute unit tests. It's available for Linux and Windows, so you can do Linux and Windows builds on it. Uh, it's a pay-as-you-go pricing model, so if you're not building anything, you don't pay for it. And last but not least, you can use it in kind of a standalone mode, where it directly connects to, for example, code commit or GitHub, or you can integrate it into code pipeline, so that code pipeline orchestrates the whole flow. So that's code build in a nutshell, and what we are going to do now is we basically look into the specific feature of code build, which is called report groups. So let me show you how report groups actually work. So this is a code build project. And if you're not familiar with um, code build, then the most important piece of code build is um, the so-called build specification. And I will show you that. So the example that you see here is from our software as a service Marbot. Um, it's a chatbot for Slack and Microsoft Teams that helps you to monitor your AWS accounts. So all this is kind of real examples, or it's not something I, I created for you. It, it is what we actually use to deploy Marbot. And this specific code build project is about executing unit tests in our project. So let's see what is going on here. So first of all, in the build spec, you have to specify the version. There are currently two versions available. And the big benefit of version two is that uh, if you run multiple commands, you basically get the environment of, and uh, there's a single environment where all the commands run in. So if you define an environment variable, it will be available in, this, in the other commands as well. So that feels very natural to me. Version 0 0.1 never felt naturally to me. So I always go with 0 0.2. Um, then we have or different phases are executed. The first phase is the install phase. In this case, I install Node version 12 and I install Python version 3.8. So that's kind of a managed runtime version provided by CodeBuild. So I don't have to do many things here to make that work. It will. It is kind of provided by CodeBuild out of the box. But then I also install some custom software. Um, so for example, I install a tool called YAML Lint to make sure that my YAML files are in good shape. So the next phase that I execute, and that's actually the only real phase here that I am um, that I use, is the build phase. And here I run the YAML int um, command, and I execute npm run test with results, which basically is configured to run my unit tests, uh, but in a way where test coverage is reported and also where unit test results are stored in a certain format. And that is your responsibility here, responsibility here. So you have to make sure that the reports are actually generated. So that's your job. And in the next section, that's the report section. And this section is relevant for report groups. So this is where we define uh, what files should be taken into account 
um, for a specific report group. So for example, I have two report groups here. I have the unit test report group. So this is where I want to report my unit test results. So how many tests are executed, how long does it take, and how many of them are failing. So that's where the uh, unit tests go to. And I specify the location of the file, and my file is placed under test-results.xml, and it uses the JUnit XML format. There are a couple of formats available, and uh, you have to use one of them, and then the results can be um, imported by the report group. The second report group that I use is used for code coverage. And if you want to have the unit test and the code coverage, you need two groups. So one group can only be either a unit test kind of style or it can be a coverage um, style group. So it cannot do both at the same time. So that's why I have two groups here. This is for coverage. My coverage data will be placed inside a folder called coverage. And then I have different files here that I take into account. And um, my main format is called um, um, is this, I don't know how to pronounce it, Clover or I don't know, but this is actually a very common format for coverage results. So my tool supported that out of the box. Uh, so there was nothing that I had to configure, for example. So great, that's the, the build spec. So that's what you need. And if you already use code build, all you need to add is the report section. So what else do you need? Make sure that the IAM role that is attached to your code build project has certain permissions. And I will show you how those permissions look like. So those are the permissions that you need. You need the create, create report group permission, you need the create report permission, the update report, batch put test cases, and batch put code coverages. And you can um, kind of have resource level constraints here, so I only allow this to go into one of the two report groups that I created. So that's pretty cool from a security perspective, and uh, you can um, limit this and restrict this in a very nice way. The other thing that is needed um, if you want to also upload those files to S3, which I want to do, uh, you need um, in your S3 bucket, you need put object permissions to upload those files to the S3 bucket that is configured for the report group. Um, so that's cool because then you get the plain files as well in S3. You can look at them if something is wrong with the format or stuff like that. Okay, so that's it from the code build perspective. Now let's uh, see how this actually looks like. So we have the report groups here in the UI. And as I said, I have two report groups. I have the unit test report group and the coverage report group. And I will start with the unit test one. Um, so let's open that quickly. And what you see here is um, a summary of what's going on. So I have 100% pass rate. I mean, that's kind of what you, what you would expect with unit tests. I have 435 test cases. Um, on average, it takes um, three seconds to run them and then you also get some um, like history and some um, yeah to get some like indication of uh, is the number of tests growing or is the the, the runtime of the tests growing and things like that just to get a better idea of how things evolve um, and you can also have a very detailed look at a specific test run for example I opened the, the, the last the last one that I created one hour ago so Basically, you see here all the test cases and I mean, yeah, you can drill down into the details and, and get a better idea of what's going on here. There's not much to see in my cases, but if like the more complicated your tests are and the more data you report, the more you can actually see here. So I think it's not super important for unit tests to look at this the level of detail as long as they pass. I mean, if they fail, then that's something else. Then you can get some interesting insights. Um, but that's it. So the more interesting thing, I, th I guess, is the coverage report. Um, so let me look at that. So what we see here is that my overall line coverage is 53% and the average branch coverage is 37% on average uh, across the code base. So that's not super good, I would say. I mean, there's room for improvement, but it's also not completely bad. At least we have coverage. Um, but it's definitely something that we could use to set a goal, okay, we want to have 70% coverage, line coverage um, until end of the year. And then we could see, okay, how can we get this graph uh, upwards a little bit? And again, you can also get more detailed information here if you click on a specific report. And now you get um, like information for each of the files. Uh, so for example, we have a file that's around natural language processing. So with the chatbot, you can actually send um, um, 
a text and we will try to figure out what you actually want to do with Marbot. So for example, you want to set up RDS monitoring. Okay, we are going to detect this with natural language processing. And as you can see in this file, we have 89% line coverage, which is pretty nice. Um, two lines are missed. Um, so that's kind of the level of details that you get here. So my problem with this report is that I actually want to go a little bit deeper. I want to see, okay, what lines I actually missed. And I can't see this in this report here from AWS. So what you need to do to get access to the full details is you have to configure the report group to export your data to S3. And that's what I did. Um, so I have an S3 bucket connected to the report group. So whenever um, code build uploads a report, it will upload all the plain files into the S3 bucket. So let's look at that. You see like that's the name of the report group. It's a code coverage type report group. And then you can see the different runs that I have. So I select um, one of them, doesn't matter. And then within that, you get all the files. So you will see here, for example, that that's kind of what the tool reports. So it's HTML files, all kinds of things. So that's what I actually want to look at. So if you want to get the details, then I have downloaded this stuff from the S3 bucket using an S3 sync command and with the CLI. And what I get then is this kind of overview, which looks a little bit nicer. And now I can drill down uh, so I can, okay, into the NLP folder, for example, within the predict.js file. Let me increase the C a little bit. And then I actually see, okay, where are the lines that are not covered? So for example, this line is not covered. So I basically never test the, like the error case. Uh, same as here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, so you get the full details if you wish. If you only want to get the high level overview of how many lines are covered uh, on the whole project, that's available in the AWS console already. So that's pretty nice. Um, I like that and I like the possibility to drill down like to the raw data if I wish, um, because sometimes that is actually important. Okay, I think that's kind of it. Uh, so it actually was pretty simple to enable uh, report groups. So I had the unit test report groups for quite some time and I added the coverage recently. Um, and one thing that I noticed is because we hadn't added coverage, no one was really looking at it. And that's why our coverage is so low uh, because we don't have anyone really taking care of it. And now that it's visible, I hope that we can increase the coverage over time here. So that's it. Um, the um, the setup um, is, is, um, is, 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 is pretty straightforward, as I told you. The hardest thing is to get your test tool to generate the reports. Um, but most of the like popular unit testing frameworks have options to generate reports and also to report coverage. So if you are lucky, everything is already there. You just have to connect the files and, and you might have to uh, enable some options that the reports are created. Okay. So Let's go back to um, the slides. So a couple of more details. So what formats are actually supported? Um, by default, um, um, the report groups assume that your files are in JUnit XML format, uh, because I think JUnit is one of the biggest and most popular testing frameworks. But as you can see, there are a whole lot of other formats supported. So if you are like in the C-sharp space, I guess NUnit would be the tool that you use. So test in G uh, also is a, a popular one. So you can see, a couple of options there. And on the other side, we see the coverage for a coverage uh, tool support. So there we have uh, also a couple of options available. So um, in my case, I was able to generate a Clover XML file. So I was captured here. Um, I don't know how well that is supported for all the other languages, but the languages that I use, they are all completely supported. So let me know if your language is supported or not in the comments. Um, so I would be really interested in how, for example, the C-sharp world is covered and also maybe the Go world and things like that, because I'm not so much into that languages. So that's it about the formats. Um, if you have any questions regarding uh, code build report groups or anything else, uh, visit our community, uh, cloudonard.io. So that's the place where you can ask questions and we provide answers. So also other people from the community can join in and, and help you out. So feel free to do that. We are always interested in not only questions, but also your feedback. So if you um, want to um, maybe have us do some other topics, or if you want to um, encourage us to do the same thing as you already do, then feel free to let us know in the community uh, or send us an email. And that's it. That's the video of uh, this week. Um, I hope you learned something. 
And um, I, I, I hope that we will see us each other again in one week um, with the next topic. Um, so thank you very much for listening and see you next week. Bye.